Hello everyone and welcome. It's Dave Brenthauer. I'm going to do a simple watercolor wash here in order to get ready for the backgrounds for all of the ornaments that I'm going to be showing you in today's video. I'm first starting with a piece of watercolor paper. This is 140 pound cold press watercolor paper and I'm saturating it just with plain water. Now I'm going to dip into some paint here. This is number 67, this beautiful blue from this Kuretake set that I'm using today. And I'm just going to put a simple wash across the paper. I'm going to start on one end, I'm going to go back and forth, and as I go across the paper it's slowly going to run out of color. Now I want to make that color a little bit stronger, so I'm going to go back over that first layer with the same color again, starting on the left side and slowly running out of paint as I go across the entire piece of watercolor paper. This will just make it a little bit stronger. <laughs> Once your watercolor piece has completely dried, you're going to make a circle cutout into that piece using the Circle Basic set from Open Studio. My watercolor piece is bigger than the circle that I'm choosing. That way I can choose a portion of the watercolor that I really like. Some spot that has a little bit more blue or less blue. It depends on what you're looking for. So I've chosen this area. It's got a nice little wash of color and transition. I'm going to start building my scene. This is the Stitched Tree Landscape from Memory Box, and I'm just going to cut a piece of white cardstock out using that, and then I'm going to position it onto that circular background in the spot that I want. So I'm going to lay it over that circle and see which parts of it I want to show up. Now I really like the streaks that have appeared on my watercolor piece, that nice little bloom of lighter color that's developed. And I want to keep that along the horizon to make it look like little beams of color coming out. And I'm going to stick a little bit more to one side. I'm going to turn everything over and I'm going to mark it on the back where I'm going to be cutting this out. So it needs to be trimmed down just a little bit for putting the whole watercolor and ornament together. And I'm going to trim that out just using some plain scissors just a little bit inside that line. You'll see in a little bit why it needs to be a little bit smaller. We could use a circular die to cut this out, but it's probably just as simple to grab a pair of scissors and just trim it out yourself. Now this first ornament that we're making is really simple, so I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting by adding some dimension. I'm putting some foam mounting tape just on the back of this Stitched Hill Landscape cutout so that that pops up just a little bit. Just put those on, pull off the liner, and then I'll place that in just the right spot on my circular background. Again, you want to keep in mind where that horizon is and make sure you're preserving all those beautiful watercolors that are moving around back there. Now I wanted to add a little bit of color to the ornament, so I've chosen the little townhomes die here. This little die, when you put everything together, creates a couple little buildings. Um, one looks a little bit more like a hotel, one looks a little bit more like a small house. And I've decided that the smaller house probably looks a little bit better for the scale of the ornament. I'm going to make that one pop out just a little bit as well. Just put a piece of foam mounting tape on the back, peel off the liner, and stick it on. And that adds some nice color. Now we just need to add some frames to the edges of our ornament to bring everything together. I'm going to use the pointed circle frames from Poppy Stamps for all of the ornaments that we're going to use today. It comes with four different sizes. We're going to use the second to largest size to put a nice little border around the ornament. I'm going to cut some craft foam using this die first. This is going to add some dimension to the edges of the ornament, create sort of a shadow box effect. So I'm going to run that through the machine and I'm also going to cut out a piece of plain old white cardstock. You can see the difference between the two different materials here. The cardstock is just real thin. The craft foam is a lot thicker and that's going to provide the dimension. Now when you put these two together there's going to be a problem because when you cut craft foam with these larger dies, the craft foam warps a little bit in the process. So it doesn't exactly line up with the cardstock piece that you're going to be using. The simple trick to fixing that is to just trim a little bit of that off. So I'm just going to trim a quarter inch or so and I'll end up filling that in later. But it's a lot easier than trying to cut out 20 pieces of foam mounting tape to go around the edge, and this makes it look a lot nicer. You can finish that up later by putting a ribbon in as the hanger for the part of the ornament and finish it off so it looks nice, but this will allow that white cardstock to adhere to the craft foam nicely. 
I've also cut out a piece of plastic using the circle die. This is going to create a window for my ornament. I'm just going to glue that onto the piece of white cardstock that I trimmed out. And if there's any excess glue, you can just clean that off before it completely dries. I have to add more glue on top because we still want to put that piece of craft foam onto the border there. You need to kind of bend it as you move around the circle so that everything stays in place. Again, that craft foam warps just a little bit, so you just need to get it in just the right spot. But it really is easy to do. You can take your time, and once everything's in place, you'll just let that dry. Make sure everything's real solid before you do the final assembly. Now this is just going to be the window on top of the ornament you made. And it really just brings everything together and makes the ornament look more finished. <laughs> I really like the look of that first ornament, but I decided to do one that was more white on white with a little bit less color. So I'm choosing the Whispering Pine Landscape. I'm going to cut that out of some plain white cardstock again. Now this particular die was made for an extra long piece of paper. You can make it as long as an A2 size card. So I'm just choosing the portion of it that's really going to work for my ornament. And I encourage you to look at your dies that you already have and see if there's portions of those that can be worked into the design here for the ornament. Just like we did in the first one, I'm going to trace out the shape of the circle that I'm going to need to be putting onto the ornament. I'm just going to cut it out with scissors again. And I'll fit that onto my watercolor background. It goes a little bit inside the edge of the background, as you saw in the first ornament, so that that frame, the pointed circles, will cover that up and provide a nice border for the whole design. I like the idea that there's a little bit of dimension in the ornament, so I'm going to put some foam mounting tape on it again and just mount that onto the circle, looking to make sure that the watercolor design sort of matches with what should be going on in the sky. So I wanted to do something that was white on white, and I found my Young Fox pair by Poppy Stamps, and I cut those out of plain white cardstock as well. You could decide whatever you want to use for a white on white sort of design, any sort of animal or more trees, or you could even do the houses in white again. The white on white is a really subtle look, and it's just beautiful when it's hanging there as an ornament on the tree. It's really striking and invites people to kind of get a little bit close and look at all the detail of the ornament. Now I've chosen the one color watercolor wash again. It's a very simple watercolor wash and I've decided to make it a little bit more interesting by embellishing it with a white gel pen. So I'm just going to use this gel pen to put little dots in the sky. This can imagine being a starry night or these could be snowflakes falling from the sky. Just take your time, add little dots, space them around and it really adds a nice little touch. Again keeping with that white on white theme. Fill the sky in. You don't need to necessarily go all the way to the edge because those pointed circle frames are going to cover up the edge, but it turns out amazing. Okay, now that we've done a one color wash, we're going to do a two color watercolor wash. And I'm going to prepare the paper exactly the same way. Again, this is watercolor paper, cold press, 140 pound. And I'm going to add some color to it from my Gansai Tambay set. This is number 37. I'm going to put that on one side. And you put it in and it fades out as you go across. And then you brush on the other color. This is number 30. Start at the other end pull it across, and you're overlapping the first color in the middle. As you go across, it slowly runs out of color. And I'm keeping everything wet the whole time so that everything blends together and stays really smooth. You can see how wet it is. Now, you can go ahead and add some more water right after it's kind of settled a little bit. Sometimes I wait for it to settle down so that things blend out, and I see how strong the color is. I've decided that I want to add some more color, so I'm going to put some more water on first and then some more paint. And you repeat the procedure just the same way you did the first time. Put the first color on, pull it across, put the second color on, and overlap that first color. Trying to keep everything wet the whole time so it blends out nicely. Now I'll set that aside to dry, and once it is dry, I'll see how intense the color is, and there should be some brush strokes showing up, adds a little texture to the background, but you can get some really intense color this way. I chose a different color scheme and built up the colors. You can see how intense 
these colors can really get to get some really dramatic backgrounds. Now I've decided to make this background a little bit more interesting. Besides doing the two color watercolor wash, I'm using some metallic paints. These are from Fine Tech, and I'm just gonna splatter them onto the background. So I'll load up the brush with paint, and then I'm just gonna hold it over the paper and tap it onto my finger so that little splatters of color drop onto the background like little stars in the sky. <laughs> Once my watercolor pieces are dry, I'll go ahead and cut that out using my circle die and get that ready for the background on the ornament. I really like how those metallic splatters shine up the background a bit and it makes everything a little more interesting. I'm gonna use the stitched circle trees for my background and this one isn't necessarily made for this purpose but I'm gonna show you how to adapt it to work with the ornament. I'll go ahead and cut it out of some white cardstock and you can see that this is one of our collage type dies where it cuts out the negative element and if you layer it over a piece of background paper then that background shows through but that's not exactly how we need to use it for the ornament so you're going to need to trim off the upper portion of it just use some scissors to cut that down and you'll see that there you go you can use that landscape and the circle at the bottom sort of matches what's going on with the circle of our ornament we don't even need to trace it out. We can just go ahead and cut along that stitched line that's part of the design for the stitched circle trees. And that's gonna allow us to put that on the background of the ornament in just the right spot. Now make sure you're keeping an eye on your background as you get things mounted. I have an ombre effect going on from light pink to dark purple here. I wanna make sure that it goes horizontally across the card. If it goes diagonal, it might look a little odd. So try to keep that more or less top to bottom as it fades from one color to the other. I've decided to use the Sugar Plum Fairy from Poppy Stamps as my focal point on this ornament. And I've cut it out of some white glitter cardstock. I think this is a point where we can add a little bit more design interest here. Some texture like glitter makes things more interesting always, so I'm gonna use some of that. I'll go ahead and glue her wings on on the back before I get her mounted on, and she's gonna fit right inside that little valley. I want her to pop up a bit, so I'm gonna put some foam mounting tape on the back of her. And that's really all there is to it for this one. This type of ornament where you've chosen a background and then one focal point is very easy to assemble. So you can make this one a little bit more complicated by adding some embellishments inside the ornament. I've gotten my pointed circle frame and window plastic ready. I'm gonna add a few sequins in here just so I can make it a shaker ornament, just so that there's a little bit more interaction. And it really is amazing once you get this together and you can play around with it. Next, we're gonna to put together another two color watercolor wash ornament. I'm gonna be using the Large River Fairy from Poppy Stamps. I'm gonna cut her out of just some plain white cardstock, but I wanna get it colored first with some Distress Oxide inks. I'll start by sponging in some wilted violet over the background, just using some circular strokes to sort of start filling in all the different areas. I don't wanna make it too even. I want there to be some different colors going on here. And I'll be adding that second color in. This is Broken China, just here and there. You'll see once you get this cut out, it'll make a little bit more sense, but we're just trying to add some color and overlap and make it interesting. Once you've sponged enough color to accommodate the die cut, you're gonna go ahead and run it through the machine. We only need enough space to cut the body out. We're gonna cut the wings out of just plain old white cardstock, so it's just the body you need to pay attention to. If there's any areas that don't have enough color on, I'm gonna go back through and use some Distress Oxide in faded jeans to sort of fill it in. I'm kind of going in around the edges to add a little bit of contour there. And then you can see how that's gonna be positioned on this two color watercolor background that I've already cut out with the circle die. I wanna make the background a little bit more wintry, so I'm gonna use the simple snowflakes from Poppy Stamps to add a few snowflakes in. I'll go ahead and position those on the circle so that that will help me position where the wings are gonna go on the fairy. 
I'll put some foam mounting tape on the back of her, and besides making it dimensional, I'm also going to use that foam mounting tape to hold her wings in place. So I've cut the wings out of plain white cardstock, and I just lift up the foam mounting tape a little bit and stick those wings under them. That way, when it goes onto the circle, I'm going to be able to position that in just the right spot, and the wings will be dimensional plus adhered to the circle. Now I can see exactly where I need to glue the snowflakes on, so I'm just going to add a drop of glue here and there. And while I'm at it, I think I'll add a few clear sequins in. So I'll just position the glue dots around the circle, avoiding those wings and avoiding the body, and just carefully push that all in place. Just takes a little drop of glue, make sure the glue that you get dries clear, and once that's dry, it'll just be as if those clear sequins are suspended over the sky. It'll add a little bit of shine to the background. Now you can see that the river fairy is too large for this ornament, and that's okay. We're just going to trim her down. So when you go through your dies, uh, when you're looking at which ones might work for a round ornament of this size, don't rule those large ones out because you can always trim it down to accommodate the ornament. Okay, once you've got that trimmed down, then it's just a matter of putting everything together and adding some more embellishments, if you like. I'll go ahead and make this into a shaker ornament. I'm going to make sure that the window plastic is in place, and I'll sprinkle a few more clear sequins on, so that some of the sequins are loose and shake inside the ornament, and some of them are suspended in the sky and will always stay positioned around the fairy. <laughs> So I realized after I made a few of these ornaments that I wanted to start trying some other backgrounds with my watercolor. So I got out my Peerless watercolors. I have a couple swatches here. I'm going to be using Cobalt Blue and Amethyst for these backgrounds. Again, it's going to be a wet technique, so I'm going to pre-wet a piece of watercolor paper. Again, this is 140 pound cold press watercolor. And I'm just going to add some dots of color from my Cobalt Blue swatch here just getting my brush wet and adding little spots here and there, leaving some space in between each. And I'll let that spread a little bit as I get ready to add my second color. This is the amethyst color, and I'm filling in the spots in between the cobalt. They're going to overlap a little bit, but you want to keep a little bit of space because they'll continue to travel. I'm going to get out some cling wrap, and I'm just going to pull out a little piece of that and put it on top of the watercolor paper while it's still wet. Now you want to press it down onto the watercolor paper and scrunch it a little bit with your fingers. The paint's going to travel a little bit and seep up inside those little wrinkles of the cling wrap, and that's what you want to have happen. So get it all scrunched up and then set it aside to dry. That'll give it some time for that paint to settle inside those little crinkles of the plastic wrap. Now once it's dry, you can pull that off and it will reveal a nice little background crackly pattern of paint that you can only get with this technique. It's super simple. It takes probably, I don't know, 30 minutes to about an hour to dry, depending on how dry it is inside your studio. Now once it's dry, I went ahead and practiced with a few other colors. I put a different combination of greens and yellows, purples and blues, and I decided just to go with my purple and blue for my background on this one. So I got out my circle die, and I ran that through my die cut machine, and that's the background for this particular ornament. For this scene, I'm going to use the Memory Box Snowbanks Drift die, and also the Poppy Stamps Cute Fawn die. And I wanted to add a little bit more glitter to this one. I think that adding a little bit of shimmer and shine to these ornaments makes it look really nice on a tree. So I got out some white glitter cardstock, and I'm going to cut out both the Snowbanks Drift die and the Cute Fawn die with this particular cardstock. I decided later, once I started positioning things together, that having that fawn in glitter cardstock kind of got lost. So I recut that out just in a plain white cardstock and saw that, that that showed up a little bit better. So I'm doing just as I did before. I've cut out my circle. I'm going to trace around it onto the Snowbanks Drift die and trim down that piece so it fits inside the ornament. Now you just have to make a decision what portion of the sky you want to show up behind the hill. Our previous watercolor pieces had an ombre effect where it went from light to dark, 
But this crackly pattern has lots of different interesting pieces to it, so you just need to choose a portion of the sky to show behind your hill. Once you've chosen, just foam mount that hill onto the watercolor piece, and then you're going to mount the deer on. You can see here that glittery deer gets lost on the glittery hill, so I'm going to use plain white cardstock for my deer and just mount that on there to make it show up better. Now I was so excited by how this was turning out that I decided to take it a step further. Once I got my lid in place, just the same as I did for the other ornaments with the clear plastic window and the ring around the edge, I put a few sprinkles of fairy sparkle sequins in there so that I could create another shaker ornament. I just love the effect of the sequins as they pass behind the deer and the trees. <laughs> Since I had some extra watercolor pieces that had dried, I decided to use one of those to make yet another ornament. This time I decided to make a larger one, so I used my largest circle out of my circle set of dies and the matching pointed circle frame that would work with it. I just lined those up to make sure that those would fit together, make sure that they work together to create that border, and I'll cut that out of the fun foam and out of plain white cardstock as well to make the border. Now for this ornament, I've decided to try something a little bit different. I'm going to use the Poppy Stamps Mighty Polar Bear for my main subject on the ornament. I'll cut him out of white cardstock, and then for the background, I'm going to use the Magnifico Flourish. Now you might not look at this die and think that that would make a great scene for the background, but I thought it probably will work. I wanted to give the idea that there was a wintry, cold breeze in the background, and it had enough little swirls and spirals on it that I thought it would probably give the idea of some sort of wintry flourish. So I'm just going to cut that out of white cardstock, and I'm going to use a little bit of white glue that dries clear to adhere that to the background. Again, you're going to be looking at that background and finding where the interesting pieces are there. You see all that little crackly pattern? You're going to be covering up some of that with the bear and the flourish, so you want to turn it so that it's in the right spot. You see all the the good pieces that are still open around the bear. Now to embellish that main subject, I wanted to give the bear a scarf. And at first I thought I would give him a paper scarf, but then I dug through my stash and I found some quarter inch wide silk ribbon that I thought would work really great as a scarf. So I got out one of my Copic markers and I decided to dye the ribbon with the marker. I'm just going to use the big tip of the marker to put some little marks across the ribbon. And what's cool is that ink will bleed a little bit into the fibers of the ribbon, stretching out and kind of giving it sort of a knitted effect. Now I just used one color, but you can imagine that you could use multiple colors here to make a multicolored scarf and make it really even more interesting. Now I'm just going to wrap that around the polar bear. And before I do that, I guess I want to put a little bit of foam mounting tape down to help me hold that scarf in place. So I've got some foam mounting tape already on the back to make him stand out a little bit. And I'm going to use one more piece to hold that scarf in place. Just wrap that around so it looks like it's around his neck. Now I need to make it look like a scarf, so I'm going to take some more of that ribbon. I'm going to tuck it up inside the area where I've already wrapped around the neck of the bear. And I'm going to tuck it in and tie a little knot. And if you imagine a scarf, there's going to be a little knot on it, and then it's going to kind of travel off to the side, just like it's sort of blowing in the wind. Now try not to overthink this portion of the design. You're just going to put a simple knot onto the scarf there, and then trim off the excess ribbon so that you have some little tails of the scarf coming off the bear there. You'll use a little bit of glue to hold things in place. It's probably not going to stick in exactly the right spot that you want it to, and this will help make sure that the scarf goes in a direction that makes sense when you put it onto the ornament. So I just put a little dab of glue on there, hold it down, and then I'm going to add some sequins. Again, I love these shaker ornaments, so I'm just going to make some more. And I know this is going to happen to you as well. I started out with a really simple design for an ornament, and then it got more and more complicated with more interesting backgrounds as I went. And I'm pretty sure the same thing might happen to you.
Okay, so now it's time for me to share my last watercolor technique with you. And this one's a little bit different. I haven't pre-wet the paper this time. This is because I want the paint to be really a strong, intense color. If you pre-wet the paper, it adds extra liquid in there. And what that'll do is soften the color. Now I usually like that effect, but for this particular wash, I want the background to be super intense. So keeping it dry makes sure that that color doesn't get faded at all. I'm just dipping my paintbrush into the paint again and again and making a really solid red. I'm going to rinse my brush. I'm going to do the same thing with my metallic paints on the other side. It's sort of the same idea where you put one color, pull it across the paper, and then you're going to build up the color on the other side and overlap in the middle. But because there's not any water on the paper, it doesn't move, so you have to work it a little bit more. You have to work a little bit faster also because you don't want any harsh lines as you go across. The only hard part is getting those to blend together in the middle, so try to move them across each other and overlap and resist working it too much. You don't want to pull that red all the way over or pull the metallic all the way over either. Now you can see some lines there of paint where it hasn't really blended out well. So I'm going to put a second layer of paint over that metallic layer just to fill it in and make it look a little bit more solid. Because we aren't adding any water to the paper, it doesn't move very well. So it's just a matter of building up the paint as strong as you possibly can. So I'm just dipping in, pulling over, and trying to move it around with a brush as much as possible. So for this one, I'm going to use the Evergreen Reindeer Dye from Memory Box. It's one of my favorites. And some score tape. So the score tape is going to be used in such a way that we're going to get two for one ornaments out of this. And you'll love it. I'm going to get a circle that's big enough to accommodate that evergreen window. But first, we're going to take that score tape and peel it off and stick it to a piece of plain white cardstock. You'll put the sticky side down, but keep that liner on top. We're going to keep that on top until we're going to put some glitter on it later. Make sure it's completely flat, and then you're going to run that through your die cut machine. But make sure that you save all those little parts that come out, all those extra little pieces you'll be using on the second ornament. Now you're just going to size it so that there's a circle on top that's going to accommodate that big opening for that reindeer window. You don't want to cut anything off. So run it through the die cut machine and now you have a circular frame around the whole thing. You want to position it so that it's centered so that none of that gets cut off. And then use that same circle die to cut out your background piece of watercolor. Now you'll notice there's some streakiness to that paint, but once you get everything together, it's less noticeable and just creates a really actually interesting effect. Now I'm going to turn that over, that's my piece of cardstock, and I'm going to put some foam mounting tape on the back. I want to cut out a bunch of little strips because there's a bunch of little details on here like the antlers and the evergreen boughs that need to stay suspended up in the air once you mount that onto the ornament background. Now I'll peel all that off and then I'm going to put that onto my background and get it centered as nice as possible so that the edges all line up. Now once those two layers have been adhered together, it's just a matter of removing the liner from that score tape. So make sure everything's tamped down really well and then you'll start at an edge and lift off that release tape. You'll find that it comes off really easy and then you'll just put that circle frame right around the edge. There's already some adhesive on there to hold it in place. Now I'm going to sprinkle some ultra fine glitter on here from Elizabeth Crafts. It's got a really nice effect when you use this with this adhesive. Now just rub it into place with your finger to make sure that you get all the sticky parts covered and it will adhere to all that white area but not to the watercolor piece in the background. Now remember all those little pieces that I saved from that first ornament? I'm going to use them on this project now. I've got that big piece and those other little pieces that came out down below as well. And I'm going to run my watercolor piece through the die cut machine again, this time with an embossing pad because all I want to do is leave an impression in the watercolor piece so I know where to position my 
score tape and cardstock layer. You can see the impression there. So I'm going to put some glue inside that impression because we're going to be gluing that score tape and cardstock piece down onto it. So I'm putting some glue on the back of that cardstock and then I'm going to position it right where I need to and that embossing pad has left an impression of the reindeer on there so I know where to put it if it's just right inside that little area. And the little pieces that fell out, I've still held on to those. I'll add the glue in and I'll just put that all back together like a puzzle. There's a little piece down below his body and below his legs and then one up inside the antlers as well. So I've got those all in place and you can see that it's all fit just right. Now once that layer has dried, you can run it through the die cut machine with a circle die. You'll cut that out, just make sure that's centered in the middle of the circle, and then you need to peel off that score tape liner, and that'll reveal the cardstock that's underneath. It'll come off real easy, all in one piece, just take your time as you pull around the edges, and that reveals a white layer of cardstock with a sticky layer of score tape on top of it. I'm going to add some glitter. This is some really sparkly glitter from Impress. And I'm just going to pour it on there because I'll just dump the excess back into the bottle. I want to make sure that I get everywhere that it's sticky. I'm going to use my finger to rub it into the score tape really well. And it'll stick everywhere that that score tape is. It's filling in all the negative space around the deer with glitter. And that white cardstock below will really bring out the shine. I hope you enjoyed today's video just as much as I enjoyed making the ornaments. I encourage you to start making your own, but just a word of caution, once you get started, it's really hard to stop. 